the expectations of uh, the finance minister's budget speech. And uh, let's talk now to Golan Mbanjwa. He is our uh, economics editor here at Newsroom Africa. You are with one of those parties, Golani, that perhaps Dr. Lumgile Mondi might be referring to. And uh, Karinda Jagmohan, I see you. We're going to come to you shortly. What does the EFF have to say about their expectations of this budget speech? Good morning, Oli. I have to say that there are a lot of expectations, but uh, as you would expect, a uh, load shedding and ESCOM are uh, top of the agenda uh, ahead of uh, this uh, 2023 budget speech. But don't forget that uh, we still uh, want to find out if the minister is uh, going to indeed um, have a budget allocated to fix this particular National Assembly which burned down. And you will remember that uh, this uh, National Assembly burned down in the early uh, uh, January and uh, government has painted over those pillars that you saw uh, painting over them. Maybe uh, some would say it is a, it's a sign of a government papering over the cracks, but it is just cosmetics. Is there, though, going to be money allocated for the National Assembly in order to fix it? But I'm joined by EFF Member of Parliament, Sinawo Tambo, to give us more about what they want to see in this year's budget speech. Sinawo, thank you very much for your time. Let's talk ESCOM. Uh, there has been talk that uh, the minister is going to take two, uh, half of the debt into the public purse. And uh, let's talk also about the Minister of Electricity. Your thoughts as the economic freedom fighters. Look, it's one of the criminal uh, elements of the budget that is going to be presented here today. The fact that they want to take the debt of ESCOM into the public balance sheet when they know that they intend to privatize and sell off ESCOM is completely illogical but part and parcel of criminality because the debt that has been accumulated at ESCOM was used to build Kusi, Lemedupi and much of the energy generation capacity that ESCOM has or doesn't have, whatever one might look at it at this point in time. So we have developed ESCOM. It has assets. It has a, an ability to be profitable. It has debt. So now we are taking that debt of ESCOM and putting it on the public balance sheet in order to make ESCOM viable for sale to those who call themselves investors and that is what is happening and now those who want to buy ESCOM will get ESCOM in a position where they have no debt obligations, they have assets ready to use and they will then parade themselves as having turned the entity around. That is the strategy here and the debt that we are taking is going to be paid by the taxpayer, by me and you and those so-called investors are going to get that entity with all of its assets and all of its probable profitability. And that is what this man-made crisis is entailed to create. It wants to create a situation where it seems like ESCOM is failing because it's under the state. But all of the development that has been done in ESCOM is going to remain and be sold off for cheap, while the so-called private sector won't have any debt obligations. So we think it's part and parcel of criminality. If the private sector truly has the capacity to turn around ESCOM, then it must buy ESCOM with its debt and show us how it's done. Not this sort of maneuvering that we're being subjected to. The Minister of Electricity is yet another ruse for someone to pretend to be doing something while they'll be doing nothing. There's nothing that is going to do. It's part and parcel of Sul Ramaphosa's of, uh, strategy of creating envoys and advisory panels and just creating more and more positions to solve a crisis instead of solving the crisis itself. So it's another way of him building his network because we must also be told in this budget how much are those people who are leading the so-called envoys to resolve the unemployment crisis, the envoys to resolve crime and gender-based violence, the advisory panels, on investments. Those people who are leading those things are being paid money. How much are they being paid? Where are the deliverables? And that Minister of Electricity is part and parcel of the scam and the network Ramaphosa is building around him. Let, let, let me ask you about this National Assembly. Uh, there's been calls for it to be refurbished, uh, money put aside. Are you expecting that uh, there should be money set aside to fix the National Assembly? Or do you also view uh, and support the calls for uh, the parliament to actually move uh, to Pretoria as it is the administrative uh, capital of South Africa? The calls for parliament to be moved by, uh, from here to Tswane cannot be supported by the EFF. They were brought by the EFF. It is the EFF that has called for parliament to be relocated to Tswane. 
So uh, we are completely against the refurbishment of the colonial pact building which exists in Cape Town now, that is called Parliament. It is here because the English and the Boers made an agreement that they are going to split the legislative capital and the administrative capital between themselves. So to refurbish this building is yet another opportunity for tender plenarying. That is all we view it as. It's another added cost to the taxpayer because the, that, the fact that Parliament is located in Parliament is an added expense. The travel, the accommodation, the logistics around it, now to refurbish this building again. It's unnecessary expenditure whereas we could centralize governance in Tuane where all people can come and submit their grievances to the people, where Parliament can sit frequently without the logistical arrangement of traveling and all of the added costs that come with it being in Cape Town. So we are completely against refurbishing Parliament. It's, uh, it's an idea of people who simply want to come to Cape Town for holiday purposes. There's no reason for us to travel to the furthest corner of the country in order to run South Africa. Sinao Tambo, EFF, a member of parliament. Thank you very much here for your time. You heard the strong views about uh, whether to move parliament here and the reasons behind that. And also uh, uh, their thoughts when it comes to the electricity minister. Uh, we, can, uh, we are possibly going to hear uh, from the minister an allocation uh, from the national budget about um, how much this ministry is actually going to get because it has to be capacitated. You also heard about um, the EFF's thoughts on uh, taking over the debt of ESCOM, saying it's pure criminality. It should not happen. But